Okay, recently we've been playing in the SOV genre of the mid to late 80s. That's shot on video. I'd like to flip it back to the mid 80s, 84 actually, and go back to 35 millimeter film. How's that sound to you? That sounds good to me. Boy, does it. It sounds so good to me. Joe Serrano presents to the world Dirty Blind. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? I'm Jason from Barefoot. This is Squeaky Clean Adult Films. This is a re-release. We are down to six vinegar syndromes and nine regulars. Oh my goodness, we're almost done. Joseph Serrano, he worked in the sexploitation genre. Cult indie filmmaker turned adult filmmaker. He always dabbled though. He was in the sexploitation genre, making legit films. You can go to see a Joe Serrano retrospective. We don't usually get that on this here program. Russ Meyer, Radley Metzger, these are Joe's contemporaries. Joe Serrano wrote the script for every movie he ever directed. How many films did he direct? 75 feature films. Yeah, right. Try 126. That guy was just counting the legit, legit ones. They're all legit. He didn't direct under his name. You'll see it says Eric Anderson. The Sins of Sodom, 1968. That's by far, hands down, his biggest. The Love Merchant, Flesh and Lace, and in the adult genre, Deep Throat 2. This film was 83 minutes long. We got it down to nine and a half. This film was triple X. We got it down to PG. We got drinking. We got multiple bar locations. We got a gap. And we got a bunch of women looking for Mel Fernandez. Bunch of cool cameos in this. Honey Wilder is the private dick. HH, what's her full name? Helen H. Harper, PI. So this is an old private dick story. So it's voiceover driven. You know, when the private investigator, who's usually a man, thinking his way throughout his problems, through his day, solving mysteries, Honey Wilder is that P.I. So from the sins of Sodom and Deep Throat 2, we bring you Dirty Blind. Now, Mr. Herman, I realize you have to get in touch with H.H., but she hasn't been in the office for almost two weeks. Um, just because your manager of monumental insurance does not give you the right to be going through my things. Constantly sticking your nose in my business. It was after office hours when she came in. Ivy had just left. And I could tell that this dame had big problems by the way she was massaging her pocketbook. I have a seat. Are you H.H. H. Harper, the private detective? Yeah. What can I do for you, sweetheart? 
It's my fiancé. He's been missing for over a week. I just don't know what to do without him. Karen Wolf, that was my client's name, fill me in on the details of the case. And she sent George Hammond, Mel's best so, friend uh, and confidant. Harvey, what did you uh, want to see me about? Well, uh, I just wanted to get a little bit of information. <laughs> yeah? Information about what? You tell him, H.H. So you're George. Yeah. We still didn't get the lead we needed. I visited all the places he frequented. All I got was an increasingly clear portrait of a magnificent young man. One that drove me bananas during the day and left me with sleepless nights. Thanks. Well, it was a rough day today, wasn't it? Oh, that happy hour never quit. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Another day. Is Nancy Fields around? Yes, she is. The day after. Thanks. Excuse me. Are you Nancy Fields? Yes. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm Mel Fernandez's girlfriend. Mel. Oh, God, I miss Mel. Why don't you come back to my place? Let's go. All trails ended in dead-end alleys. A sleazy west side bar was the background when I finally ran her down. Are you Mrs. Fernandez? I was Mrs. Fernandez. Hey, get your hands off of me. Look, I'm a private investigator, Helen Harper. I'm looking for Mel Fernandez. You're looking for Mel Fernandez. So am I. Ah, uh, Karen. Hi, Walter. Um, how's Mel? Actually, I was hoping you could tell me. I came as soon as I got your message. Any word from Mel? Not yet. We're trying. Karen, I want you to think. Anyone, an acquaintance, a relative, is there anybody that might have had contact with me? We do have these two screwball cousins, though, that uh, Mel was quite fond of, and I think they took a shine to him, too. Hmm. Huh. Do you think perhaps we could give them a visit? They're really nuts. I'm warning you. I can take it. <laughs> Who was it, Sid? It's cousin Karen and H.H. H. Harper. That detective? They're looking for Mr. Fernandez. That nice young man. Perhaps he ran away, Karen. You were too bossy with him. And possessive. Well, ladies. Can I help you? Get in tonic for me. I'll have the same. Like Good. Well, Nancy isn't here. I was hoping I'd get to introduce you to the former Mrs. Fernandez. Maybe she's calmed down by now. Excuse me, uh, do you know when Miss Fields will be back? No, I haven't seen her. Nancy? Yeah. Well, you won't see her for a while. After you left, she went completely nuts. <laughs> they had to take her away in a straitjacket. Should have been here. Here, buy the house a drink. Come on, sweetie, there's no hope for us here. I got an idea. But why are we 
breaking into this apartment? Because it's the only lead we have left. Something about the scene we just witnessed didn't add up. It looked like one thing, but it might be another. Bossy and possessive, huh? Those two with their plants. I knew we shouldn't have gone there. Here, you keep this company. I'm going to run down one more list. He was worth the time to check it out. Karen said you were always so unhappy and bitter. What I saw this afternoon was a lot different. Something had to change your attitude. What did you think of that? Did you like it? Looks good, sounds good, awesome performances, bunch of cool cameos cool Sharon Mitchell cameo. She's one of her cousins. They call her screwball and nutty, but they refer to Karen as bossy and possessive Karen. Karen Wolf is played by Carol Cross. I think everyone in this movie has a first and last name, rare for the genre, but Joe is a writer and writers give people last names. We've had quite a few Henri Pichards in the last couple of days. Carol was known for starring in all four of his mini-sodes of Taboo American Style. Joey Silvera, two days in a row, is in the opening scene. Cameo, a lot of cameos. A lot of this movie could not be shown to you. Most of the meat is off the bone, and I'm trying to show you some scraps. A lot of cameos. Michael Knight, Cody Nicole, Renee Summers, all gracing us with little cameos. Not just Carol and Sharon and Joey. And boy, I love seeing Honey Wilder. All Four Taboos, Sweet Alice, Private Teacher, Summer Camp Girls. You know what I've never seen? Wild Dallas Honey. I think we should look into that. I love the bartender. Multiple scenes. And he has lines. I don't know if the adult industry functions the same way as Hollywood. But that would have doubled his pay in a traditional Hollywood film, getting a line, would have got him into the Actors Guild too. Hey, thanks for watching. Eight more to go, plus those six vinegar syndromes. Maybe I should start putting the tally together. Nine more to go, this is gonna cross not nine. So eight plus six, so we literally have 14 left to go and we are to where we were three years ago. 20 videos in 20 days. Plus, so it makes me feel good. Hopefully I can get my car back. I did get a job for tomorrow. We got a leak in a house. I'm gonna cut the drywall out, fix the leak, put a new piece of drywall in, mud it. I'll come back the next day Sand it, paint it, you won't even be able to tell I was there. Blue collar filmmaker, blue collar human. <laughs> I'll see you later.